Shoo my friendly guy, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin Anwin for anyone who's new here. And let's continue building in the wetland safari zoo today. Oh, safari park. What did I call it? Oh, it's been a couple of episodes now. Wetland safari park, right? <laughs> I'm going to be doing a California sea lion habitat today. I thought we'd take a little break from the wetlands, animals, and try out a different animal. And I didn't actually build a California sea lion habitat in the America Zoo, so I thought it'd be nice to add one in this zoo instead. I wanted this habitat to have like a beach vibe to it, so I picked this spot in between the Red Crown Cranes Zen Garden and the abandoned warehouse for the platypus because the Zen Garden had like a sand terrain paint on it I thought I'd kind of blend that in around the map with a kind of beach vibe on the ground like ground level because this one is going to have an underwater viewing area underwater viewing areas can be quite glitchy the first thing you need to do is put tunneling on in the path settings and you need enough of an area to be able to dig into the ground low enough to get underneath where the water technically is in the game you need to make sure that the water is currently in there so you know that you've got it deep enough for the game to ignore the fact that there's water there and then you can kind of play around with the depth taking the water in and out but always make sure when you do take the water out you've got the terrain completely enclosed and once i had like the right sort of depth of the path i then went back in and changed the terrain a little bit in the habitat and i just lowered the bottom of the terrain until it was almost flush with the path because the terrain always technically needs to be above the path for the underwater path to work because technically you're tricking the game into thinking that the path is underneath the water you want to make sure that you are completely done with the terraforming once you have the path in you can always go back and undo the path and then play around with the terraforming but once that path is in and you do other things you can't undo you can't really change the terrain under the water then so you want to make sure that you're really happy with how the terrain is and if you aren't, can't quite get the level right sometimes it can be too low or too high you can also go into the path settings and right at the bottom if you scroll all the way down you have elevated length and that will change the length of the ramps and stairs so if you want to make little stairs you can tick the elevated length box and then you can change the length of the stairs or ramps to any sort of length that you would like nice smooth long ramps or little stairs to go up to something or just as a decoration you can pull the bar right or left to make the length shorter or longer if you like and that sort of helps with getting the right level for the underwater pathing too but even though I tried to make sure that the ground is flat and I tried to have the terrain as close to the path as possible there are still some kind of glitchy pieces on the edges because this is just not a supported thing in the game and I really like this path that I picked for under the water too because it kind of had the same color scheme as the zoo color scheme it's a blue color palette that I found and the path had the turquoise blue light blue color and the orange in the mosaic so it fit in really nicely with the color scheme so I'm starting the aquarium building now I'm calling it an aquarium building because that's you know what you see in aquariums is underwater things even though it's, this is just for the California sea lion and I wanted to hide the terrain because the tunneling kind of fucks with your terrain a little bit <laughs> so it's nicer to hide this with like a, a building than trying to hide it with rocks and this is another reason why I had the path snapped onto the world axis so I could also build a building above the ground and build the cover for the underwater path as well so it doesn't look like your guests are gonna drown 
they are technically in the water, but they won't technically drown because they think they're below the water too. <laughs> And the aquarium building is going to have the same sort of vibe as the entrance building. So it's going to have the same colour scheme, the peach, the turquoise blue and the dark blue. Just so everything feels consistent. It's nice to have the same colour scheme throughout a zoo. So it feels like everything belongs together. Because sometimes if you... <laughs> you like me and you like lots of wacky, unusual, very themed habitats. The zoo can feel like just a collection of random habitats rather than a, an actual zoo. So adding in the same colour scheme throughout can make it feel more consistent, but also making this building the same sorts of styles of buildings throughout the zoo can also make it feel like it was meant to be all together and this building's kind of fun i could have made it a big rectangle it would have sort of worked but i made it l-shaped just so it fit in with the shape of the pass and i didn't make the building too large to fill out too much area but there's so much room in in this so there's plenty of space to be able to keep adding in different swimming animals aquatic animals speaking of what should we do next I was thinking maybe I should do some guest facilities because I didn't really add in shops to the entrance building so they might need shops and bathrooms, toilets <laughs> at some point. But if I do do a habitat next, what animal should I build a habitat for? Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a wetlands animal pack animal. Like with this one, I added the California sea lion. I don't even mind really doing any more aquatic animals either because I haven't built a habitat for them in so long. And if you do have an animal in mind, do you have a sort of style of habitat for that as well? I really like the wood as like a flooring in between the peach and the blue walls. It's kind of disappointing that this wasn't flexi colour. I know we have a wood texture that's flexi colour from the aquatic pack. I do try my best to keep my packs limited when I'm doing these individual builds because it tends to add up. <laughs> I kind of justify doing one or two packs per build but when it comes to adding all of those up together to putting out the completed zoo blueprint onto my workshop it ends up like the the zoo actually used pretty much every pack <laughs> and I like my builds to be available for more people um, if you can't afford to buy every single pack so I don't like using too many packs so I am trying to make sure that I stick to base game with most of my builds with some exceptions I've done a lot of curved pieces for the underwater tunnel in my aquatic zoo so i wanted this to be a little bit more modern with the square pieces and using the fractured glass pieces for the majority of that and that's why it was good to place the paths down using the align to grid because then it's easier to place the construction pieces down around it but there's a lot of different ways that you can create the underwater tunnels you don't have to do them square like this I've used some glass canopy pieces from it's either the new world or the planet zoo style if you search canopy it'll look like it has like columns underneath it but you just need to lower those columns into the ground and that one's good because it's a non-grid prop so you can move that and duplicate that using the advanced move tool rather than aligning it to grid like I have for this one and for the roof I felt so crafty doing this <laughs> I felt like I completely cheated but I was also kind of proud of myself for this as well why redo an entire roof if you've already got one so I duplicated my roof from the entrance building. If you want to see how I did this curvy wooden roof, check out that video. I point where I think the iCards are going to be, but I don't actually remember. I, does it still pop up on mobile whether that like iCard comes in? I know it doesn't on TV app, but it never did, I don't think. But YouTube's changed all of that. 
Although they do have some things that have changed for the better, like <laughs> there's a cute animation for the like button now that uh, kind of gives off like a little confetti, rainbow confetti when you press like, if you want to check that out. And that's not a ploy for you to like my video. You can then unlike it if you want to. <laughs> the roof didn't obviously quite fit in this building, but I had the like general outline and I just moved it around slightly so it would fit over the L shape. And I didn't want to completely cover the whole building with the roof. Uh, I didn't want the roof to be square. I wanted it to fit in that L shape. So I thought for the longer L shaped part, the taller part of the building, I would just keep with the top of the curve and then delete the rest. So it still fit in that L shape, but the curve flowed nicely onto the lower part. And for the entrance of the building, I wanted to do a nice sign. And because it is for the California sea lion, I just called it Sea Lion Aquarium. And I went with the darker blue colour for the writing so it would stand out nicely against the peach. And I also used the water miscellaneous sign because that ties in with the mural wall that I have for the entrance building so it all nicely ties in together. The glass is beautiful. It is my favourite glass panel out of all of them I think. But it just seemed a little bit plain and it didn't feel solid enough. You kind of want the impression that these are waterproof <laughs> and having like little gaps in between the window panels wasn't really shouting completely sealed. So I wanted to like kind of seal off some gaps between the glass panels with a pillar and I picked the dark blue. I went with like more blue under the water just because like the water theme goes with like the blue more. I just wanted to use uh, something to line the edges and give it a little bit more of a pop of colour too. But I have to say it's a lot easier to build underwater now that I can change the <laughs> transparency of the water. We didn't have water customization for the aquatic path so it was a lot harder to see underwater <laughs> and build underwater when the transparency was at like regular transparency but I've put the water at the moment at as transparent as it can go just so I can see and for this back wall because it was kind of glitchy and not the prettiest looking I didn't have this wall in complete glass I had it solid to match in with the inner walls of the aquarium building this is going to be like the education wall so guests can kind of still see the California sea lions but they can also get some education while they're down there too and this is when I added the Vista Point. Is it a Vista Point? Whatever it is. The thing that advertises or encourages guests to come to a certain area. And I put two down so they could see on both corners. And I'm using the New World Fairy Lights, String Lights. And I've actually lit these up into the turquoise colour and the peach colour. So it's nice and bright and the reflections on the glass under the water is absolutely beautiful. I picked this wall light because it kind of looked like a bubble. It was round, kind of went with the water theme. And it was flexi colour too, so I could recolour the like wall mount part into the dark blue so it would match in with the columns. The pathway to get underground to get into the water is really dark, so I needed to add lights in the tunnel as well. And because I've already spaced out the panels really nicely with the lights. I thought I might as well just duplicate that along the underground tunnel as well so everything's nicely spaced out. Try and get everything done once and then just duplicate it. That's why it's easier to have different groups as well but I've actually kept these in the same group. I don't always follow my own rules. <laughs> and I didn't want the beach to just be sand. I thought that was kind of boring. I do want the above ground area to be decorated as well. So I just thought I decorated like a beach. <laughs> the deck chairs, the Planet Zoo deck chairs are perfect of course for a beach setting and I use the Indian style rugs as beach towels. Just a technique that I've done a couple of times for beachy type habitats. The rugs are great for beach towels because all of the 
Rugs are flexi colour and there's so many different patterns. You can have completely different beach towels throughout the whole beach or you can keep them the same theme. I've kept mine the same theme so I've gone with the colour scheme for the zoo. So everything is dark blue, turquoise, orange and peach. The peach doesn't really stand out against the sand much so I didn't use that a lot. And lastly I thought my underwater viewing area was amazing but the water around it really fucking boring. And I was nearing eight hours at this point so I thought I'd create one decoration for the under the water part and make that nicely detailed but then just duplicate it and dot it around the whole underwater area. I used the temperate rocks because this is in a temperate biome so it would match in nicely with the terrain paint and these water plants I thought would be perfect for seaweed. So there was a couple of different variations and if you use the advanced move tool you can duplicate them and raise them up in a straight line to make them look like they are long and flowy. And then just duplicating them around, having a couple of different variations makes it feel more natural. And then obviously because they are short and tall, you can make some longer and some shorter. And it's always nice, instead of just placing the plants around the edges of the rocks, add some in the cracks of the rocks, in the like gaps, because that's how plants would naturally grow. They would grow in the gaps of the rocks, not just around the rocks. And it makes it feel less like a pile of rocks and plants around it. It makes it all blend in nicely with each other. I'm trying to put some seaweed around the underwater feeder as well, so it looks like they have to go into the plants to get the fish. Because fish would hide in the plant life, wouldn't they? Just make it a little bit more interesting to look at. There's some things that I didn't quite think of when I first did these underwater viewing areas for my aquatic pack so I'm really really happy with this one I had a lot of fun building it but if you enjoyed it let me know and also let me know what habitat animal I should do next or some kind of guest facility if you have an idea for that that would be really cool and I'm gonna leave it off there if you enjoyed the video smash that like button and if you haven't already and you would like to it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video I upload speed builds on Wednesdays and shorts tutorials on Saturdays thank you so much for watching I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time goodbye